Today, On Point takes a distinct look at South Africa's state-owned enterprises. How do we fix them? How do we get a better image for those entities that are aimed at helping South Africa's social plan, at boosting and growing South Africa, not just as an economy, but for its people as well? Certain parts of the economy equate to large parts of this country, and with finance and government forming such a massive part of South Africa's GDP, it's immensely significant that those elements are enhanced to bring out the most amount of money. Mining now only takes up 8%, but initially this was at least 20% of South Africa's economy. Manufacturing also once held high at around 21%, but it has continued to dwindle, particularly over the last 10 years. How do we boost up all of these sectors to get back to the area in which we can get sustainable growth above 3% for all. Agriculture accounting for 3% of South Africa's GDP. I can tell you now that the sentiment is, however, that the land distribution claims and questions around how we conduct that will be significant to where that number goes to, whether it be higher or lower. So South Africa has had the problem of debt, however, and that has been the one issue that we'd need to look at. South Africa's SOEs themselves have maintained a high standard of debt. And taking a look at the biggest uh, borrowers in the country, the Land Bank, the Development Bank of South Africa, the Industrial Development Corporation, Transnet, Sanral, the SAA, and of course uh, TCTA as well, AXA, Denel, and even ESCOM. You take a look at that debt profile. For now, it seems that it is going to be headed higher to 2021. And the hope is that after that medium-term period, it will peter off and go down a little bit. But as things begin to slow up again, South Africa will have to go on to a big infrastructure drive. And that will see 2025, 2026 bring out another uh, huge bulk of uh, debt on that front. But let's remember, a lot of that will seemingly be domestic debt and less so on the internet. National front. So we're looking to rely on the companies that are here in South Africa, investing more within ourselves. And hopefully the trend here is to go downwards and government will certainly want to get a better image when it comes to this as well. So what do we do then with regards to South Africa's debt picture? How do we make it better? Well, I can tell you now that the nominal debt in South Africa has continued to shoot up over the last few years. Having sat around $266 billion, it's now climbed all the way up to around $702 billion uh, rand as well. Therefore, the 2016-2017 period, in seven years, it's gone up 163%. The aim here is to bring that down. That is the sentiment that President Cyril Ramaphosa will need to deal with. That is the one element that he'll want to bring down. How does he do that? Perhaps the likes of ESCOM, splitting that up, aiding it, finding a way to grow it, will certainly be of significant value. Tonight, that countdown continues and will continue to bring you all the latest with regards to what he needs to do and what government is aimed at doing as we continue our SOE focus. Ladies. Great graphical illustrations there, Arabile. Well, for more on what to expect from President Sir Ramaphosa's State of the Nation address, we cross to our reporter in Parliament, Manelisi Dubase. Manelisi, what can we expect this evening? Uh, Nompo, we expect a lot. I mean, uh, and if I can just take from where Arabile uh, left, uh, Nompo, uh, you will have to uh, give a lot of incentives to this economy. Uh, I was uh, uh, talking to people from the Department of Trade and Industry the, uh, uh, sometime this week, and they were saying that uh, there is no other option but to post uh, and to bolster uh, the, uh, uh, the, the capital uh, um, position of these SOEs, uh, President Sir Ram, um, Ramaphosa has hinted that uh, they will fix ESCOM. Uh, and as Arabi just uh, said, now that they might split uh, the entity into three uh, uh, and uh, they were going to fix the debt uh, that uh, um, ESCOM is facing. But uh, over and above that, uh, you know, there are other entities that are also key to our economy. Uh, as we already mentioned, SA8, NL, SABC, and so on and so forth. Uh, but I said to you earlier that uh, over and above what the president will be saying, I mean, he will also be uh, looking at the elections that is taking place in three months' time. But he's not going to be the only one who will be having his eye on that election. <clears throat> Excuse me, there will be others who will also be looking at that election. For instance, opposition parties, uh, the EFF have said it, that just before you can say anything, just before you can greet the people at 7 o'clock this afternoon, 
he will have first to clarify his role and that of his son with regard to the Bosasa debacle. And uh, I, we don't know how is that going to pan out. Right now, as we talk, right just next door where I am, uh, the GCIS and Parliament are briefing some of my colleagues there about what's going to happen tonight. Uh, we expect that uh, they will have Plan B, uh, pro probably, you know, getting out EFF as soon as possible before uh, they capture the imagination of the nation and end up, uh, you know, dominating uh, this uh, last state of the nation address uh, for the sixth parliament of South Africa. We will be back here uh, in three months' time or four months' time to open yet another parliament, the seventh parliament of the Republic of South Africa, the inauguration of the president and the swearing-in of cabinet ministers and members of parliament. But right now, as one person has said, it's the economy. Thanks very much, Manelisa. We're going to leave it there. We'll have uh, more market news for you after a short break.